When Fountain Peugeot rolled out the Elba 45, there were some pretty big shoes to fill. Up until that point in time, I think the Helia 44 was without a doubt the most successful boat that Fountain Peugeot had built. Arguably the boat that led the way for Fountain Peugeot being the industry leader that they are. Needless to say, a couple years into the production run, not only did the Elba fill those shoes nicely, but it took it to the next level in terms of what Fountain Peugeot is capable of doing. So how do you take something like an Elba 45 that's already established as just a well-received, well-designed boat and really make it stand apart in a crowded field? You do certain things like add a square top main, parasailer, bowsprit, code zero, bigger things like 14 kilowatts of lithium batteries, solar, water maker, hydraulic platform, nice tender. That's what you need to go blue water cruising. And today we're on board Harmony a 2021 Fountain Peugeot Elba 45 that exhibits what it means to be a truly turnkey boat. You guys have already heard me say this on board, not just the Elba 45, but any boat with a sky lounge arrangement. I love this area. I love the fact that we've got some nice seating all around the aft portion of it, giving you a really good vantage point while looking forward. I also love the fact that you've got a couple of day beds up here for anybody that wants to sunbathe too. Now this is one of the most functional spaces on the entire boat, in my opinion. And if you guys are anything like me, I think you'll find that you're going to spend a lot of time up here, either underway or at anchor. From here, we're going to make our way down to the helm station. Harmony, as I've already told you guys, is literally equipped with every factory option. Here's a great place to see how over the top the owners went when outfitting the electronics package on board the boat. This helm arrangement is incredibly well laid out. There's a lot going on here, but it is not overwhelming. Over here on the port side, we've got the touchscreen Garmin display, which not only integrates with your AIS, but also the radar. As we continue moving to starboard, we've got the multi-function display, which is set up as a wind instrument. Continuing starboard from the wind instrument, we have another Garmin multi-function display. Outboard of that, we have the upgraded stainless steel throttles. After that, we have the Garmin autopilot control head unit, which I think is perfectly placed. It's at an angle where even with polarized sunglasses, you can pretty much see it from anywhere here at the helm. Transitioning from there back inboard, we've got the start stop panels for the Volvo Penta engines, a Plastimo compass, as well as the tachometers for the Volvo D260s and a quick windless anchor counter and remote. From here, we're gonna go ahead and move to the second component that you need for running the boat, the deck plan. So here on the surface, it looks like a standard Elba 45 deck arrangement. There's a few things that are worth pointing out that really make this boat very easy for shorthanded sailing. First and foremost, we have two powered winches as well as one manual winch. In addition to that, they've also added Genoa jammers to the boat, which is not a factory standard option, but makes line management incredibly easy. And on the subject of just small details that make this boat better, I can't tell you how many catamarans, not just Elba 45s, but catamarans in general, where you look at the lead from the furling line to the powered winch and the fiberglass and gel coats all chewed up because there's not any protection. This is the attention to detail these owners have put into Harmony. So all the way on the port side of the helm, we have the port Genoa halyard, the main sheet, the port and starboard traveler control line. Continuing to starboard there, we have the starboard Genoa cleat going through the aftermarket V-cam jammer, as well as two reefing lines. As we continue starboard, we have another bank of jammers, which has your spinnaker halyard, topping lift, main halyard, the tack reef points, as well as your Genoa halyard. And you can see just below where the winches are, everything is neatly organized, not just in the line basket, but also in these hangers. From here, we're gonna make our way up the starboard weather deck. So something worth pointing out on this boat is all of the deck hatches are flush mounted, giving it very, very clean lines. There's also an aftermarket grab rail here added onto the coach roof. There's a lot going up here on the foredeck. And first we're gonna talk about the non-sailing components and then move into the sailing components. So the starboard as well as port, we have two four peaks, which are cavernous, giving you more than adequate storage. 
Center line, we have two deep lazarettes. On the starboard side, we have the anchor windlass, as well as the chain locker with more than adequate storage around it. They've also upgraded the anchor from the stock 45 pound Delta to an 85 pound Ultra, which is an anchor you would normally find on a boat in the 60 foot class. On the port side, we have the upgraded Fisher Panda generator, as well as the aqua base water maker. So the second component up here on the foredeck worth mentioning is not only do we have the factory cushion set up forward, but they also have the ratcheting back. So you can either lay flat how they're currently deployed or ratchet it up for forward facing seating. The third and arguably most important thing I wanna talk about here is not only how they made this boat easier to sail, but also easier for mooring and anchoring. So on the subject of sailing, you can see I'm currently standing on the Fountain Peugeot factory bowsprit. Now, instead of going with the factory sail, they actually went with a custom built Code Zero and added Sunbrella UV protection, allowing them to leave the sail up permanently without any type of degradation from UV lighting. Just after that, we have the Genoa, which is a standard Genoa from Fountain Peugeot, and the furling line running all the way back to the sail control center, just forward of the helm. And as I mentioned while we're back there, they've got that stainless chafe plate, which will just keep this boat looking newer for much longer. One final thing about sail controls is this boat is equipped with a parasailer, and they added the bow leads or the bow rollers for a parasailer both on the starboard bow as well as the port bow. And the last thing I wanna talk about up here before we make our way back to the cockpit is just one really small detail that makes a huge difference when cruising on a boat. Everybody that sailed a Fountain Peugeot knows that the factory arrangement for tying to a mooring ball is just difficult. It's not clean, it's not intuitive, and it's a challenge. On this boat, they added two fair leads on the cross beam, both the starboard and port, making it incredibly easy to secure your vessel to a mooring ball be it in the Caribbean or med mooring, and then run that line back to the four deck cleats. Let's go ahead and make our way back to the cockpit. Before we jump into the transoms or the mechanical spaces, let's just dive right into this industry leading cockpit. Over on the port side, all the way outboard, we've got a nice day bed. Just inboard of that, we have an L-shaped settee with a beautifully oiled real teak table. Just center line of that, additional seating. Now I've spent a lot of time, fortunately, out sailing on the Elba 45 with Laura, and we found this not only to be a comfortable space just for the two of us dining alone, but happy hour for eight or 10 people on board the boat as well. All the way on the stern here, we've got another seating area. And one thing that Fountain Peugeot did in their more recent models that you don't find on the earlier models was a small detail where they just raised the backrest up a little bit more, making them exponentially more comfortable than earlier boats. There's also an oversized magma grill here on the starboard portion of the cockpit. And directly adjacent to that is my favorite seat in the house, this aft-facing daybed, which also has storage down below. And just forward of that is the Vitra Frigo drink refrigeration. Before we go check out the transom and technical spaces, one last thing worth mentioning is this boat also has the optional Lumar cockpit winches, making it very easy to fly not just the parasailer on board, but also the custom built Code Zero with weather strip. Just after the zero entry salon doors, we've got great access to not only the helm and the flybridge, which also has integrated life raft storage below. Before we head into the salon, let's just take a quick look at the technical space over here on the port side, as well as the transom. So Harmony is equipped with a lot of features not often found in an Elba 45. She's got the D260s, which are the upgraded motors, which you would expect in a boat of this pedigree, also paired to a set of folding props. Where she differs though, is she has a fuel polishing system. She's also got a large nine kilowatt integral alternator here on the port side, which does a 48 volt charge to the lithium batteries, charging them exponentially quicker than any other system out there. Also on the port side transom, we have a four rung ladder. And as you make your way from a swim, you'll also find a hot cold shower here on the outboard side. Now just forward of that, we have the shore power connection. This boat is equipped with global power, which means you can plug it into either US electric or Euro electric and run all of the systems on board. 
We're gonna go check out the starboard mechanical space, but as we make our way over here, this is the perfect time to point out the factory installed hydraulic swim platform. You'll also see on top of that hydraulic swim platform, we have a high field 340 tender with a 25 horsepower Yamaha four stroke. And just a little detail to make that tender run better. They've actually added dolphin fins to the lower unit, which makes it a much more efficient unit. One final detail before checking out the technical space over here on the starboard side, is you'll see the port for the aftermarket custom carbon fiber passerelle, which not only made cruising in the Mediterranean far more convenient, but even today when we boarded the boat at Spice Island Marine, made it far easier than doing the old run and jump. Over here in the starboard technical space, we have the second Volvo D260, also paired with the folding prop. We also have the battery bank here, and this boat is equipped with 14,000 kilowatts of lithium batteries. They spec'd it out so they could run the air conditioning in the owner's stateroom all night long. Now this is a perfect time to talk a little bit about the electrical system on board Harmony. As you can see in the starboard technical space, we've got the AGM batteries that came from the factory, as well as a 2000 watt inverter that was also upgraded at the factory. Where this boat also differs is it has 14 kilowatts of lithium batteries. So the way that the system's integrated together is we have the lithium batteries and the lazarette here center line, keeping the weight well balanced. Those are charged off of the integral system we talked about or the alternators on the motors. In turn, those 48 volt lithium batteries power this 12 volt bank, which powers the outlets on the board, things like navigation electronics, the lighting, all of the 12 volt systems. Now in the port side mechanical space, there's a 5,000 watt Victron Quattro inverter, and that was set up deliberately this way so the owners of Harmony could run air conditioning in the owner's stateroom all night long without being concerned about draining the batteries. Every marine diesel, be it a Volvo like we have on Harmony, a Yanmar found on another boat, a Kubota, or one of the other brands of diesels, they all have their shortcomings. It's all about knowing what those shortcomings are and having a solution. For the Volvo series, it's actually the MDI control box, which is prone to failure, rendering the engine useless. This particular boat though, was equipped with an MDI bypass, which just gives you peace of mind knowing, even if that component fails, you're still gonna be able to fire up the motor and get into a harbor of safe refuge. And that's the start stop button you see on the inboard side of the starboard motor. One thing I wanna talk about before we go into detail here in the salon is just about how great the profile is on the Elba 45. I mean, these boats just look quick when you're looking at them side on. Now, oftentimes when you have a sleek coach roof like you have on an Elba 45, it means compromising headroom in the interior. I'm personally almost six feet tall. And as you can see, I have more than adequate headroom here in this space. So we're gonna begin the salon tour here, the port aft facing galley. I like the fact that it's an L-shaped galley with plenty of counter space that's here. And I love the natural connectivity between the salon, particularly the galley portion of the salon and the outside entertaining areas. This galley has a lot going on with the optional freezer here. We'll point out the isotherm drawer style fridges in a moment, storage down below, as well as an oven here on the port aft corner. As we continue down the port side, we get to the three burner cooktop, which I'm not sure if I've said this on other tours we've done in the past. I don't understand when a boat builder tries to cram a four burner top for a stove, because on a boat, particularly in this class, you can't fit four pots on there. So it's better to have a three burner stove, which in my opinion, is all you need when cooking on a boat in this size range. Not only are there nice organized areas for storage up top, but there's more than adequate storage underneath the countertop. While talking about storage, it's also well worth mentioning that there's underfoot storage in the salon here and underneath this oversized U-shaped settee, there's also additional storage. Now, while we're talking about the U-shaped settee, uh, it's worth mentioning the high-low electric table. So this morning while Sean was getting set up for the video, I was talking to the sellers of the boat about what was their favorite factory option that they've enjoyed the most that they weren't anticipating getting enjoyment out of. And it's actually that high load table. Because of how easy it is to operate, they use it almost every day. 
And it's those little details that make a huge difference when living aboard the boat and just finding that extra level of comfort. As we continue over to the starboard side of the salon, it's worth noting that not only do you have more than adequate seating for all of your family and friends when they're on board the boat, but take a look at all this natural light that comes in through the whole side windows, as well as the overhead skylights. There's also more than adequate ventilation through this salon into the cockpit because of the single large opening forward center line. One last thing we're gonna take a look at before checking out the staterooms is the starboard aft portion, which not only has two large isotherm drawer style fridges, but we've got adequate storage underneath the nav desk here. We've got an additional Garmin display, fusion stereo control, vessel management system, as well as a Victron battery management system, which lets you know exactly what's going on with your solar, as well as the lithium batteries. Making our way down the starboard companionway aft, you'll see it's a semi walk around queen size berth with more than adequate light filling the space from the overhead hatch, the outboard window, as well as the aft facing window. There's also storage underneath the berth here too. Continuing forward from the berth on the outboard side, we also have the head, which is an electric head, single basin sink, vanity and mirror, storage underneath the countertop, and a full separate shower. A couple things I wanna point out as we make our way forward here in the starboard companionway. The first is that they have the optional factory carpet set for both hulls, which just makes it feel a little bit homier in my opinion over the standard veneer. One final thing of note here in the starboard companionway is the aftermarket installed washer and vented dryer combo unit. Final thing we're gonna check out here in the starboard hall is the second ensuite guest stateroom. This stateroom is also a semi walk around berth, as well as filled with tons of natural light from not only the outboard window, but the overhead hatch, which not only floods the space with light, but on those cool Caribbean nights, provides more than adequate ventilation for the space. Underneath the berth, we have additional storage, as well as on the inboard side, we have a hanging locker. And adjacent to that, we have the guest head, which is very comparable to the one we saw in the aft stateroom. Let's go ahead and make our way across the salon and check out the final and most impressive stateroom on board Harmony, the Maestro cabin. If you've not been on board an Elba 45 Maestro, it's really hard to fully appreciate just how impressive this space is from a livability standpoint. Making our way aft in the stateroom, you'll see we've got a semi walk around berth comparable to what we saw in the starboard VIP. We've also got more than adequate storage on the inboard side, and the space is just filled with natural light from the overhead window, the outboard window, as well as the aft facing window. When you're out cruising on a sailboat, storage is paramount. I mean, you've heard me say that time and time again. You just have to have your stuff with you. And if you look around this stateroom, there is more than adequate storage, not only for folding clothes and hanging clothes, but also things like laptops, electronics, and everything else you want to bring with you while voyaging around the world. Another thing worth noting in the owner's stateroom is they've got the tropical air option which in lieu of having a single reverse cycle air conditioning, this boat's got a forward and an aft air conditioning, meaning the space is incredibly comfortable no matter how hot mother nature tries to make it. Continuing forward from there, we've got additional storage as we make our way into the owner's head. Which on the inboard side has a large single basin sink with storage up top as well as underneath the countertop. On the outboard side, we have what I think is probably the most unique thing to Fountain Peugeot, which is a shower arrangement on the outboard side that I absolutely love. And I also love the fact that the toilet is in a separate water closet forward, just giving a little bit more privacy when living aboard full time. I mean, how often is it that we get to show you a boat that not only has an excessive amount of lithium, solar water maker the equipment list that this particular boat has but also for the boat to be named harmony where all of these systems work harmoniously together giving you a seamless cruising experience while out on the water
On behalf of myself, Laura, and the rest of the team at Catamaran Central, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to come down to Grenada with me and checking out a special boat in a place that I personally consider incredibly special.